Hey folks, so welcome back to the next video in the Zorin 12.2 uh, Ultimate Review here. And uh, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the actual OS itself plus the desktop environment. And we're going to take a look at some of the default applications that it comes with. Sort of go over the environment, if you will, and see if it's worth, uh, you know, paying for and switching to from Mac, OS X, uh, or Windows, or even another uh, distribution of, of Linux. So let's start by taking a look at the actual release itself. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click here on the desktop and I'm going to open up a terminal window here. And from this window, let's actually just bring it to the center of the window here. And I'm going to type in uh, a command here. So cat is a command that allows you to uh, print the contents of a particular file to the screen or to the terminal in this case and you can actually uh, run that with a number of different flags but uh, essentially what it does is it just prints the contents of a file to the screen and so what I'm essentially saying is I want you to print the contents of this etc OS release file to the screen so that I can take a look at the uh, the information and let's take a look at that and see what it actually has to offer so the name is Zorn OS, and you can see the version here says 12.2. ID matches. The ID like is usually the upstream, and so uh, the, in this case it shows Ubuntu, which isn't really a big surprise because we do know that that's the case. And it gives you a pretty name, version ID, that gives you the home URL, which in fact you can click on, which will pop, you know, uh, throw, throw up the browser and take you to the web page. And you can kind of see that it shows you the version code name, Ubuntu code name. And so Xenio, which is which is what you see here, is the Ubuntu code name. And actually for Ubuntu, I believe that's the 16.x release. So it is not the most current release of Ubuntu. It's not the six month release. In fact, it's the LTS or the long term support release of Ubuntu that is being utilized for this uh, operating system. And that's fine. In fact, most people out there when Ubuntu releases a new version or Debian uh, or any of the, the distributions really for, for Linux, the, most people actually tend to go with the long term release. It means that the software and the configuration and the applications and even the kernel and OS itself has been vetted enough or tested enough that they're comfortable installing it on their main operating system or their main server, main laptop, main computer, and so they feel comfortable with that. And really, I can't, I, you know, I can't really knock them for that because really, it's it's sort of a good policy to go with, especially if you intend to use Linux as your you know daily driver, your main operating system for you know a computer that you work from home from for your your work purposes, uh, or you house all your major data, you know, photography and uh, CAD development and so on. So really, if that's your sort of policy for going forward and, and installing updates for Linux. It's really not a bad a way to go. So let's take a look at the desktop environment next. And we already know that the choice here, the selection from Zorin, is the GNOME desktop environment. So uh, we want to make sure that that's what it's using. And that, let's also find out what version it, it's actually invoking in this release. Now, keep in mind that the 12.2, and in this particular case, the ultimate edition, quote unquote, uh, is supposed to be the latest release of the OS. So one would expect to have the latest release of the GNOME uh, KDE or desktop environment rather, and that happens to be a 3.26. So that at the time of this video, 3.26 is really the latest release. So we're hoping that that's the case. Let's just hit enter a few times so we can kind of distinguish between the two commands. And let's go ahead and type in another command here. Okay, so as we can see that the GNOME version or the GNOME shell that it's using is 3.18, which is actually lower than the 3.26. Now, for those of you out there who are probably, you know, uh, those types of folks that like to live on the edge and kind of have the latest and greatest and even test out the beta and even alpha releases this is this is probably an OS that you won't want to deal with and that's perfectly fine in fact you can even upgrade the GNOME version if you'd like and that kind of leads me to a point about Linux the idea here is that you're really not limited in what you can and cannot do in the sense that if you wanted to upgrade this from the 
3.18 version to the 3.26, you can actually go ahead and do that, and nothing's really going to prevent you from doing so. But you know, taking a look at what you get as an OBE or an out of box experience, this is what the uh, the, the vendor or the folks that develop this operating system have decided to uh, implement. So that's that's you know good to know that you're running 3.18. Now it isn't the latest, but it's also not the oldest version out there in use. Let's go ahead and hit enter a few times. In fact, let me do that again. Let's take a look at the kernel version next. So you name SNR. Oops, let's try that again here. There we go. And we can see that it's using Linux and it's set for the 4.10 release. Now, uh, there there is, of course, newer versions out there. I think 4.13 and even 4.14 uh, are in use or available for download. But again, I want to kind of point out here a theme that the folks at Zorin are implementing in their release. They're not going for the latest and greatest that's available, but they're going for stuff that has been tested and vetted. And for folks out there who are transitioning from the Windows or Mac world, this really is is really ideal, and in fact, I think preferable to the latest and greatest. In fact, I would I would say that even with the latest uh, releases in Mac OS X uh, or even Windows, really folks that are using the OS for their main a PC that houses everything that they do, you know, as I said before, from CAD work, office work, photography, music, whatever the case may be, you really don't want to, you know, be on the latest and greatest because that's that's where the most amount of bugs or the frequency of bugs increase. And so you want to kind of deal with the stuff that's been vetted thoroughly or as much as possible uh, in those circumstances. Now, if you're running a test environment or you're just you just like to play with different versions of Linux or even Windows or even Mac OS X, go ahead and install the latest and greatest stuff just so you can kind of get a feel for what's coming down the pipeline. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into some of the default applications that you get with this version of the OS. Again, keep in mind that this is the ultimate quote unquote version or edition, and so you're likely to find some more applications in here, uh, office utilities, games, and such that you may not find necessarily with the core version or the light version or education version. And so this is what we're gonna focus on because again, this is the version that they are charging you money for, and so we have to find out if this is worth our hard-earned uh, money. So let's go ahead and minimize this for a quick second and with any operating system the first thing you you know you want to kind of take a look at in terms of applications is the file manager now there are quite a few out there that you can pick from uh, Polo and Nautilus and, and the list kind of goes on and on in fact this being GNOME it, it comes actually with the latest version of files in fact let me bring that up here real quick uh, this is actually on the desktop by default so I'm just gonna open this up here and if you left click, if you right click on here, it kind of gives you the right click context menu where you can minimize move and such. But if you left click on this, you actually get the sidebar preferences, help about and such. So let's go ahead and bring about the about window here. And you can see that it's actually listed as files and it's 3.18. So, uh, you know, GNOME actually produced a, uh, a file manager called Nautilus for quite a long time. In fact, this is sort of uh, a new iteration of it. In fact, they just renamed it to Files or GNOME Files. But this is what you get. And you can see a credit list here. You can kind of scroll down and see all the wonderful folks that put their hard earned uh, effort and time and blood, sweat, and tears into this application. And this is what you get as part of the default uh, install or the OBE, the out of box uh, experience. And I gotta say, you know what? It it does the job. Uh, you can click on the the uh, quick action here, and you can create a folder, new tab, empty document. You can select all, enter a specific location. Uh, if you want to, you can actually go straight to the main root folder here if you want to. Uh, so it, it definitely kind of gives you. Uh, the quick actions, the folders, the links, the kind of, you know, overall uh, activities and, um, you know, abilities that you would look for in a file manager. Now, again, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like you'd find in, say, Polo file manager. In fact, I made a video out there about it. You can check that out if you'd like. Uh, so, you know, that this is sort of like a straightforward implementation. In fact, you know, I got to say, it, it, it is still, you know, 
uh, reminiscent of the Windows File Explorer. You know, it, it kind of uh, kind of gives me that that feel, and uh, you know, it is something that I kind of link with the the Windows world in that sense. You can kind of change views out here. Uh, you can show different columns, and you can reload or quote unquote refresh. And uh, you can you can search for a particular file folder if you'd like. So I mean, you know, you got your quick links here, and you can of course add other. Um, locations like NFS or FTP or UNC, whatever the case may be. So clearly it is familiar and straightforward. Again, it doesn't have every bell and whistle that you would kind of look forward to in an OS that claims to be uh, Zorin, right? Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it works. So that is that is worthwhile uh, noting here. And you do start with the home directory here. So. Uh, that's that's pretty much what the file manager has. You can, of course, uh, you know, go to a full screen mode here if you'd like, and you can actually go into the preferences. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those now. So here's the file preferences here, or files preferences if you'd like, and you can choose how you want to arrange them, and if you want to sort the folders, you have a behavior here. If you want to single click or double click, uh, actually little text files. In the Linux world, if you want to actually be able to execute them or just view the contents of them, you know, as far as text files go, I really kind of liken this to PowerShell. For those of you out there that have worked with PowerShell before, you can have a PS1 file and you can kind of have it act as a text file because that's really what Microsoft designed it to be. But you can also execute it uh, from a PowerShell, uh, you know, window or a command prompt, and this is you know basically similar to that kind of behavior here. And you have some trash uh, options as well. You have the display where you can choose between the, the modified size and whether you want a list view. And then of course you can go through the column size here and kind of pick which columns you think best suits your needs. And you have a preview here as well for thumbnails if you want to go into a, a folder that has pictures and such and uh, folders where you want the count uh, on the folder list. So again, not uh, too involved, not too intricate, you know, not with every bell and whistle, but it does the job and it'll get you through the uh, initial use of the operating system. Okay, so that should take care of the, you know, overall system here with the desktop environment, the kernel, OS settings, uh, or OS uh, properties, as well as the file manager. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here and uh, in the next video we're going to take a look at the default apps that come with this quote unquote ultimate version of Zorin and we'll also look at the system settings and see uh, what type of changes we can apply aesthetically to the system uh, and so on. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you in the next one.